Hey, hello and welcome to today's video. I can't believe it's already September. Today is September, it's the first of the month and I'm here to talk about all of the books that I read during August. Somehow this month I managed 15 books, which is just unheard of for me. So because of how they are stacked up, we are going to do this in reverse order. So starting with what I finished with this month at the end of it, all the way to the 1st of August. So I finished David Copperfield, finally. I gave this book two stars. It's ridiculously long, first of all. I mean, that's been my biggest qualm with this book, was that it was just so long and so strenuous to get through. The book has taken me two months to read, which I, I think is just frankly ridiculous. Like, it's not that deep and it's not that serious. In David Copperfield, obviously a classic, so a lot of people do know about this book. We're following David Copperfield and his life, just his turmoils, his tragedies, his woes and it's a negative book there aren't that many happy things that happen even at the end when he got married like it's not a spoiler because it's David Copperfield but when he got married I was like this does not feel right to me this is not the right time like, I just had so many issues with this book um so I gave this two stars I will never reread this in my life now that I've read it and I can gladly say that I have read it in conversation I will never reread this book I feel like there's a mark on this jumper this jumper is brand new and I feel like there's a mark on it oh then I read I love this book. I love this book. This book is gorgeous. This is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. I rated this a 4.5 stars out of 5 and oh, I love Jax. I fell in love with Jax this month so deeply that I am terrified for the final book. I've yet to read The Ballad of Never After. I'm a little bit of the way through but I loved this book. In this, we are following Evangeline, who is our main girl, and she thinks the love of her life has had a curse put on him, so she goes to Jax to try and get some help. And this whole series of events unravels, and the story just goes in a direction that I really didn't expect, and because it was so unexpected, it was so fun and so enjoyable, and I read this so quickly. The one-liners that Jax has so funny and also so endearing in this the romance is so it's not even there it's not even there but you can feel it even though it's non-existent it's so weird it's yeah it's weird how you're rooting for these characters not even knowing if they're gonna enter into a love relationship state but stephanie garber's writing is so like reading caraval and then reading this you can really see how she progresses as a writer and i'm so happy i read this like you guys are so right about this series it's phenomenal another great book this month was love theoretically by ali hazelwood i gave this a four stars out of five i just picked this up in tesco i do already own a copy of this but i saw it in tesco and i didn't have the regular edition and i just really was like I really need to read that book I just feel so drawn towards that I really want to read it and so I did and I'm so happy about that this is my favorite Ali Hazelwood actually I'm going to give this like a 4.25 we're going to go into the decimals because I rated the love hypothesis and love on the brain four, and this was better it's another feminist novel by Ali Hazelwood um I think this is named is his name Jack this is, oh yeah Jack um in this we have Jack and Elsie Elsie is and she's a postgraduate trying to find a graduate job and it's not going well for her. And so she goes to an interview and who happens to be there but the guy that she is fake dating's brother. And it's just, it's one of those moments where you're like, this is going wrong very, very quickly. Loved it. I loved how, <laughs> how much I related to Elsie. Um, she is a chronic people pleaser. She is a pathological people pleaser, so I would say. And she was doing things work that really, really annoyed me. And she kept saying yes to it. It was very clear she didn't want to do it. And I was like, why is this woman saying yes to things she doesn't want to do? And then I looked in the mirror and I thought, that is you. So I, can, I didn't have a leg to stand on with that. I really recommend this if you're in the in the mood for a little feminist romance. I also read Lady Susan, The Watsons and Santa Smith's Month. I'm counting this as one book because obviously they're all very short. I rated this three stars overall. None of them really did anything for me. I was the most excited about Santa Smith, but obviously that is an unfinished novel and it makes me so sad because you just don't get any of the romance yet because it's so early on in the book and I would have loved to have read that as a full novel. I did start the TV show, but then I read that Theo James wasn't, isn't in season two and three, so I stopped because I was like, this is, I wanted him for all of the series, not just one. I don't really have a lot to say on this. This is for my uni course. It's fine. I didn't really rate Lady Susan at all. That was a bit boring. The Watsons was, I can't even actually remember what happened in the Watsons. I enjoyed it. Sanderson was definitely my favourite out of the three. Then we have the Caraval trilogy. Of Caraval, Legendary and Finale. I did do a reading vlog of this if you want to go and check it out. 
Oh my god, how I love the series. The series overall is a 4.5, but every book I gave a 4, except this middle one. Legendary is definitely a 4.25. I loved this. The element that I loved the most was the magic system. Anything goes. Anything goes in the magic system. It's so whimsical and you get lost in the world. And it really reminded me of the magical faraway tree stories from when I was younger. I loved those books and how they were like transported to a different world and anything goes. There's no real rules. That's what I liked about this, how when they got off the boat and they were eventually like on the island, anything went. The game just started and you had to just go along with it. And I loved how you couldn't trust any of the things that were happening but also you forgot that you couldn't trust it. It's so clever, it's so cleverly done. I hated Donatella at the beginning and she's my favorite character by the end. I loved, I think Legendary is my favorite because that's where we get to meet Jax. Oh, I fell in love with this man and he's hilarious. Especially in the middle book, that's when you really get to see, I feel like the real side of Jax. I would really recommend the series. Although it's young adult, you do feel like the stakes are super high, but these books are, phenomenal chef's kiss stunning i love jacks i don't know how many times i'm gonna have to tell you this but i love the man i also picked up this month emily wilde's encyclopedia of fairies this was such a short book i did not expect it to be this short like the font is massive and only 300 pages so i read this again very quickly i loved this book the only <laughs> i think i rated this four stars as well i had a great reading month but i gave this four stars the only problem i had was the names I can't even remember the name of the guy. What was his name? Wendell Bambley. That's an unnecessary, Bambley, really? It just felt a bit too far-fetched of it. Like, I know that somebody's name in real life. I'm very sorry. But Wendell Bambley, I can't even say it. I don't know. It's like a tongue twister. I didn't really like that. And how she would like call him by his last name. It wasn't, it wasn't like an effective last name to call somebody by their last name. And in this, however, we have Emily Wilde, who is a researcher to do with fairies. She loves to research fairies and folk and folklore during this novel we're seeing her on a research trip wendell obviously comes in at some point we find some stuff about him it's just a cozy fantasy book the stakes are not high at any point you just read it you fall in love with the characters there's a cute dog it's cozy i think it would be perfect for the autumn to be honest or like um a folklore autumnal day in summer if that makes any sense this was really fun uh, I, I'm excited for the sequel. I think the sequel is going to be so good. I read a little self-help book this month. This is The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. This changed my life when I was 17. Rereading it as a 20 year old, not too much. I gave this three stars. It was fine. It's fine. Um, this could have been a 10 minute YouTube video, not a 150 page book, but it is what it is. Um, I have not done The Miracle Morning yet so far. I'm too exhausted. <laughs> I read Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. This is a five-star read. I reread this so many times. It's never not going to be a five-star read. She's heavily annotated. She's loved. She's adored. I'm not going to tell you about this book. Everybody knows about Pride and Prejudice, but just know that I will not be settling for less. I will be having a Mr. Darcy. I will be having a Jax. And so that's our manifestation. Oh my God. Then I, I read Binding 13 this month. Oh my god. I read Binding 13 and I read Keeping 13. Binding 13. I originally I finished this. I rated it four stars. I thought this book is great and I have not been able to stop thinking about it. I'm, I want to reread it straight away and it's at that point that you know that it's a five star read. So this was five stars. Keeping 13 was a four stars. It was fine. It was, it was like they got together and then I was like, it was kind of dealing with the consequences of them being together and the aftermath of certain things that certain characters had done in this book. So this one was full of tension and pining, which is why I love this one so much. I do need to buy the new copies of these books because I don't even own Keeping 13 and I need to. However, I will say I read this on my Kindle because when I bought this and I saw it and I saw like how tiny that font was, there was no way. So it was Nighttime for you on Kindle and I bought it and I devoured it. I think I read it in like two days. Oh my god, it's set in Ireland festival. If you don't know, I've never been to Ireland, but I am obsessed with it. I love Ireland. I'm convinced I'm gonna marry somebody Irish. Convinced, convinced I'm gonna move there. We have Johnny, who is a rugby boy. And he is up and coming. He's essentially going to be a famous rugby player. That is what his goal is. And he goes to a private school called Tommins. That's where the name comes from, the Boys of Tommin, the series. And we then have little Shannon. And Shannon has been bullied at her previous school. And so her parents have decided to put her into private, hoping that her life will get better. She meets Johnny. And it's just this kind of, you know, they are supposed to be together, but you have no idea how it's going to actually pan out because it's not looking good for them. And so we're just following them on like their separate journeys but they keep they keep meeting it's just a high school sports romance set in islands 
And I loved it. I loved it. Like I said, Keeping 13, I, what I didn't love as much, but this book, I'm this close, this close to rereading it. I love Chloe Walsh. I can't wait for the, to read the next two, which I still need to get. But yeah, I loved this book. It was my favourite. Ugh. I read Masters of Death by Olivia Blake, five stars. When I originally read this in the indie published edition, it was a four star. Oh my God, how incredible this was the second time around. Beautiful book. I will always love Olivia Blake. The best way to market this to you is if you want a book about a vampire real estate agent trying to sell a haunted house and the ghost who is haunting the house refuses to leave so therefore it cannot be sold and if it can't be sold what are they going to do oh i know i'll hire a medium a medium to come and get rid of my ghost however the medium is not actually a medium he's the godson of death and death has gone missing and so a whole murder mystery unravels and it's just phenomenal there is such a confusion in this book with time how things are happening how things are progressing it's all mixed up it's as if olivia blake has written it chronologically and gone i'm gonna cut this and she's moved it around to make it a completely different timeline that still works it's one of the best books i've ever read for disjointed writing it's just incredible. Five stars. I love Olivia Blake and I'll never not love Olivia Blake. Then the final two books that I read, I read Clean also by Olivia Blake, which is a Dramione fan fiction. I just needed something to get my life. I don't know. I, I just found myself on my phone a lot this month. Like, I don't know why I've been attached to my phone. And I was like, instead of scrolling on Instagram and TikTok, I still do that. But instead of doing that as much, I'm going to go on Wattpad and I'm going to read clean. And it helped. It made me feel less bad about being on my phone because at least I'm reading. Um, and I gave that a four stars. And I also read, which I don't know where I've put the book, which is why I don't physically have it. I do physically have it, just it's not here right now. Um, is Not Here To Be Liked by Michelle Quatch. I gave that two stars. The, there were lots of grammatical errors in that book, which just threw me off. As an English student, it threw me. I did not understand why. And the storyline i just wasn't invested in i think it's definitely for a young audience like a young young adults because it was not for me at all but that doesn't mean that somebody else wouldn't love it so those are all the books that i read this month i had a great time reading these books they were so good and i highly recommend essentially all of them bar david copperfield because never again please please let me know what your favorite book you read in august was because as you know i'm nosy and i love to know your recommendations and tell me which book you're most excited for in september anything just tell me what you're excited for in september thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys very soon